Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ask Alicia, the weekly series where you ask me questions and I answer them. Maybe. First question comes from Vanessa Rodriguez. Hi, Vanessa. Vanessa says, Hi, Alicia. I'd like to know the difference between kind of, sort of, and somewhat. Greetings from Brazil. Let's begin with kind of and sort of. So kind of and sort of can be used before verbs and adjectives to mean a little. And when we're speaking quickly, we say kinda and sorta. You'll also see the spelling used in casual messages like text messages or maybe less formal emails. So some examples. I kind of want to eat Korean for lunch. This dessert is kind of sweet, don't you think? I sort of like that new movie. Our neighbors are being sort of noisy tonight. We also use kind of and sort of as softeners, especially for bad news. Some examples. I sort of forgot to send you the details. I kind of broke your computer. Also, keep in mind that kind of and sort of can come before a noun, but when they're used in this way, kind of and sort of mean type. They don't mean a little. For example, what kind of ice cream do you like? What sort of car are you thinking of buying? So let's move on to somewhat. Somewhat means a little or slightly also, um, but it sounds more formal than kind of or sort of. We can use somewhat before adjectives. Uh, we can also use somewhat with verbs, but you'll find somewhat used after the verb. So it's an adverb there. Some examples. Our answer depends somewhat on today's meeting. The lesson content may vary somewhat in accordance with students' questions. Like I said, we can use it before adjectives, but it feels more formal than kind of or sort of. I'm somewhat surprised you replied to my email. This decision seems somewhat odd. Okay, so I hope that that helps answer your question. Thanks very much for sending it along. Let's move on to your next question. Next question comes from David Hosono. Hi, David. David says, hi, Alicia. I am Japanese and not religious. Is it acceptable for me to use religious words like, oh my God, or bless you? If not acceptable, is there an alternate way of saying it? Mm. This is kind of a tough question because it depends on your listener. So let's start with the phrase, bless you, here. I've never heard of a situation where someone has gotten in trouble for saying, bless you. If you're not familiar with this phrase, bless you is a common expression English speakers use after someone sneezes. It has kind of an interesting history. I've read two things, actually, about where this expression comes from. One, people used to believe that when you sneeze, uh, that part of your soul or part of your spirit leaves your body, so they said, bless you. The other thing is that I heard that the phrase originated around the time of the Black Plague, and so sneezing was like the first sign that someone might die. So people said, bless you, when they heard a sneeze. Interesting. I don't know which is true, but it's an interesting, it's an interesting expression for sure. Um, but regardless, when people say bless you, it typically isn't a problem. If you're not sure or if you're not feeling comfortable, just say nothing. That's totally natural as well. Uh, some other people like to use the German word Gesundheit. I don't know if my pronunciation is correct there, but it means roughly health to my understanding. So some people like to use that. I personally don't. You might hear it from time to time. Um, but if you're ever worried, my recommendation uh, would be to say nothing. I personally don't use the expression, bless you. Regarding the question about, oh my God, this one is perhaps more sensitive depending on the person you're talking to. There are some people, especially people who have strong religious beliefs um, who believe that using the word God outside of a religious situation is bad. It's not a good thing to do. So in those cases, those people might feel offended if you use the word God in the expression, oh my God. For many people, it's not a problem. If you're worried, if you're not sure, if you're not comfortable, um, you can use the expression, oh my gosh. This is a very common and very acceptable and natural substitute. So, oh my gosh, in place. Um, if you listen to the people you're around and you hear them saying, oh my God, oh my God, you can probably safely use, oh my God, as well. But if you're worried, you can just say, oh my gosh, 
that's fine too. So I hope that this helps you. Thanks very much for this question. Okay, let's move on to your next question. Next question comes from Kanat. Hi, Kanat. Kanat says, hi, Alicia. Could you please explain the difference between what do I have to do and what am I supposed to do? Yeah, the difference between have to and supposed to is subtle. So let's start with have to. When we use the expression have to, we're talking about like an obligation or a responsibility. When we use supposed to, it's like there's some kind of outside expectation, like a societal expectation or like a relationship expectation. Something you are supposed to do, like a specific way you are supposed to behave. So regarding your question then, let's imagine two people are having an argument. If someone says, what do I have to do? It's like they're asking about their obligations. They're asking about their responsibilities. What must they do? If someone asks the question, what am I supposed to do? It's often like they're asking for the other person's expectations of them. So maybe it's not even necessarily like a responsibility, but you're asking for someone else's expectations with that question. So the situations where you would hear these two are maybe a little bit different. Like, what do I have to do? Would be used more when we're looking to achieve a goal. Like, what do I have to do to get a good score on this test? Or what do I have to do to get this job? If you're asking the question, what am I supposed to do? It's often in a situation that's like trouble. So maybe you're in trouble with like uh, the person you're in a relationship with, or maybe you're in like trouble with like a landlord, for example. Like, what am I supposed to do? If I don't have this house, I'll be in trouble. So it's like, what are your expectations of me versus um, what are the things I must do? So it's a very subtle difference. Um, supposed to is kind of more like societies and relationships and those kinds of like people related like connections and have to can feel more like obligations, responsibilities. So I would suggest to just pay attention when you see these two words used in text and you can kind of get a feel for the times when we would use these. I hope that this helps answer your question. Thanks very much for sending it along. Okay, let's move on to your next question. Next question comes from Ty. Hi, Ty. Ty says, hello, Alicia. Can you tell me about the word record and the way to read it when it's a verb and when it's a noun? Yeah, so as a verb, the word is pronounced record, record. So for example, we're recording a video or let's record a song next year. When used as a noun to talk about like the disc that you can use to play music or to talk about like a written note where you keep a lot of information, the pronunciation is record, record. So he bought a lot of records last week or do you keep a record of your tasks? So as a verb, record. As a noun, record. I hope that this helps you. Thanks very much for the question. Let's move on to your next question. Next question comes from Victoria. Hi, Victoria. Victoria says, I would be grateful if you could explain the difference between want to and wanted to. Also, when can we use wanted to? Okay, um, the short answer here is that want to is present tense and wanted to is past tense. Examples, I wanna eat lunch. You wanna get a coffee? He wanted to go jogging. She wanted to cook dinner. So something that might confuse people here is when we're trying to be soft and polite, we might use wanted in past tense to make like a soft request or to ask for information in a soft way. So examples, I wanted to know where the restroom was. I wanted to ask you about the new software. I wanted to talk to you about the presentation. So yes, we're using the past tense here, like I wanted to talk to you about the presentation. It just makes the question sound softer using past tense in that way. So we don't do this for all verbs. We do this for like questioning verbs, like I was wondering is another good example, or I was hoping. So we're trying to like make an inquiry. You might hear this past tense structure used. So we use this in situations where there's a little bit of distance between us and the listener. Maybe with like a work colleague we're not so close to, or maybe with like staff at a department store. So we use it typically with strangers, but we're trying to be a little bit more polite. 
Of course, you don't have to do this. Some people are very direct and they use present tense. They say, I want to know where the restroom is or I want to talk to you about the presentation. I personally prefer to be a little softer and a little more polite, so I also tend to use the past tense form. So you can choose which you prefer, but if you hear past tense in situations like these, it's to make a softer question. I hope that this helps you. Thanks very much for the question. All right, that's everything that I have for this week, so thank you as always for sending your questions. Remember, you can send them to me at EnglishClass101.com slash ask hyphen Alicia. Of course, if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you have not already, and check us out at EnglishClass101.com for some other things that can help you with your English studies. Thanks very much for watching this week's episode of Ask Alicia, and I will see you again next week. Bye-bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.